Hello everyone, and welcome to Metagame Mastery, where it's not just about what the card does, but how it impacts the game. There have been some massive leaks for War of the Spark, and we are going to go over all of them. Nicol Bolas, Karn, Teferi, and many, many more. It's possible that these are an April Fool's Day joke, but they look damn good. So... If you enjoy our content, click that subscribe button and make sure you're subscribed to get access to all our latest videos. Without further ado, big time go time. Let's go. Rolesk Apex Hybrid is 5 CMC, 2 colorless, green, green, and a blue for a 4 5 legendary human mutant with flying and trample. When it enters the battlefield, put two plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control. When he dies, proliferate, then proliferate again. So this is a really solid value creature. Not only are you getting a total of six, seven on the board for your five mana investment with two keywords, but on top of that, when he dies, you get extreme value in not one but two proliferate triggers allowing you to get another two plus one plus one counters on the creature you're targeting with this and also gaining loyalty counters on all your many many planeswalkers in this set Niv-Mizzet Reborn is one of each color for a 6-6 six, six legendary dragon avatar with flying. When he enters the battlefield, reveal the top 10 cards of your library. For each color pair, choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them. Put the chosen cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So, this looks like an amazing commander. Specifically for Brawl, but it's also a solid 5 color commander choice. For EDH. For only 5 mana, you're getting great value, getting a 6 6 flyer, but if you look at the top 10 cards of your deck, you could potentially hit one of one card for each guild, and that makes for a really great Ravnica themed build. Overall, this should be a lot of fun. To Fairy Time Raveler is 3 CMC, 1 colorless, a white, and a blue for a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 4. He has a static ability. Each opponent can cast spells only any time they could cast a sorcery. He has a plus 1 ability. Until your next turn, cast sorceries as if they had flash. And he has minus 3 ability. Return up to 1 target artifact, creature, or enchantment to its owner's hand. Draw a card. So this card's really good. He makes it so that your opponent's cannot respond to any of your spells but you have the ability to uh act at instant speed with any of your sorceries including board wipes which is so important in azoria's control this thing is sick and in a pinch he not only acts as removal but an additional card draw solid card Soren Vengeful Bloodlord is 4 CMC, 2 colorless, a white and a black, for a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 4. He has a static ability, and as long as it's your turn, creatures and planeswalkers you control have lifelink. He has a plus 2 ability, where he deals 1 damage to target player or planeswalker, and then his minus X ability is very interesting. Return target creature card with converted mana cost, Acts from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature is a vampire in addition to its other types. So let's break this down. His static ability only works on your turn. So it only affects abilities that are sorcery speed on your planeswalkers. And it only affects your creatures while they're attacking. Not while they're blocking. This is very dependent on what else you have in play in order to get some mileage out of said ability. His plus two ability might be okay for pinging down an opponent's planeswalker, keeping them from being able to ultimate, or there are a lot of planeswalkers with odd number loyalty that have only a minus ability uh, that would be in even numbers. He might help you finish off uh, 
depleted planeswalker. That's highly situational, and dealing one damage isn't a huge deal. The interesting thing is his minus X ability, because if you play him on turn four and do his plus two ability, he will have six loyalty going into turn five. You will then have your mana to play your turn five creature like you normally would, and bring your turn six creature back from your graveyard onto the battlefield that same turn. That's potentially a big play, especially in limited. I don't foresee that much setup being worthwhile in, say, constructive formats like Standard and EDH. RAL, Storm Conduit, is 4 CMC, 2 colorless, a blue and a red, for a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 4. He has a static ability that whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, he deals 1 damage to target, opponent, or planeswalker. He has a plus 2 ability to scry 1, and he has a minus 2 ability. When you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for that copy. So this card obviously wants to play with the Is It Phoenix decks we're seeing in standard. Is it going to be able to work its way into that deck? They're really heavy at the 4 drop slot. I don't know that uh, something that you're not going to get any value up from the turn you play it is going to be able to work its way in. That said, in really aggressive storm decks in say commander or maybe even modern, that incremental damage will add up really quickly. That's where I expect to see this card really shine. Domery, Anarch of Bolas is 3 CMC, 1 colorless, a red and a green, for a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 3. He has a static ability that creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0 at all times. He also has a plus 1 ability where you get either a green or red mana. Creatures you cast this turn cannot be countered. And he has a minus 2 ability. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. So this one really depends on you having creatures on the board. And he helps make sure that you will get your creatures on the board by allowing you not only to ramp every single turn, but making sure that your creatures cannot be countered. And with the prevalence of control magic right now in all formats, that is not nothing. On top of that, he potentially, depending on your board state, can act as a repeatable source of removal. That said, turn three really hurts uh, taking that turn off in aggressive formats, uh, especially since it's not going to do anything for you the turn that you play it. I'm thinking this thing is best used in Commander. Nissa, who shakes the world is 5 CMC, 3 colorless green green, for a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 5. She has a static ability, whenever you tap a forest for mana, add an additional green. So she's a mana doubler, right out the gates, I'm sold. She has a plus 1 ability, put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on up to 1 target non-creature land you control untap it. It becomes a 0-0 zero, zero elemental creature with vigilance and haste that still land. So I like this. I really like this in conjunction with man lands, giving them a permanent plus three plus three counters and two additional keywords it is very sweet. And because you are untapping that land with this ability, you're also potentially getting mana ramp out of this. Not that you really need it. She's a mana doubler! Okay. Her minus 8 ability is you get an emblem with lands you control have indestructible. Search your library for any number of forest cards, put them into play tapped, then shuffle your library. Wow. Wow. What an ability. This card is sick and will definitely be breaking some games in Commander. Chandra Fire Artisan is 4 CMC, 2 colorless, and 2 red for a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 4. 
She has a static ability that whenever one or more loyalty counters are removed from her, she deals that much damage to target opponent or planeswalker. She has a plus one ability. Exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn. She also has a minus seven ability. Exile the top seven cards of your library. You may play them this turn. So, right out the gate, we're looking at a uh, repeatable card advantage for red decks. Now, mind you, there's already some really good card advantage cards in standard. This could see play, obviously, in limited. It's still really solid. But outside of that, the ult, you're really living on getting to the ultimate ability, where after three activations of the plus one ability you'll be able to do minus seven and get seven more cards that you have access to in addition to dealing seven damage to target opponent or planeswalker overall i'd say this card is got some potential but it's going to take too much work to set up torch of defiance it is not Gideon Blackblade is 3 CMC, 1 colorless, and 2 white for a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 4. He has a static ability that as long as it's your turn, he is a 4-4 human soldier creature with indestructible that's still a planeswalker. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to him during your turn. He has a plus 1 ability. Up to one other target creature you control gains your choice of vigilance, lifelink, or indestructible until end of turn. And lastly, he has a plus six ability, Exile Target Non-Land Permanent. Wow, this card's good. This card's definitely going to see play in Standard, being a three mana, four four with Indestructible and Upside. He's a very aggressive attacker. On top of that, he's really good in other formats, just allowing you not only to get that value, but to spread Indestructible around or Vigilance and lifelink depending on what the situation is and the potential removal of his ultimate is just icing on the cake Karn the great creator costs four mana of any color. He is a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of five Artifact abilities of artifacts your opponent's control can't be activated Wow that's absolutely brutal. And he has a plus one ability. Until your next turn, up to one target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost. Very reminiscent of the original card, legendary card. And then, his minus two ability. You may choose an artifact card from outside the game or an exile, reveal that card and add it to your hand. Holy crap. This is a one card combo. And I'm not even joking. Play this with Mycosynth Lat Lattice. Turn all, car all permanents into artifacts. Suddenly, all of your opponent's lands cannot be tapped for mana. You heard me. They are locked out of the game from that point forward. This is a one card combo. Brutal. Nicobolus Dragon God is 5 CMC. Blue, black, 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 and a red. For a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 4. His static ability is he has the loyalty abilities of all other planeswalkers on the battlefield what that's right he is a planeswalker wild card in addition he has other abilities for example plus one draw a card each opponent exiles a card from their hand or a permanent they control minus three destroy target creature or planeswalker and minus eight each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature or planeswalker loses the game wow what an ultimate if you can control the board and lock down your opponents you will absolutely be able to uh beat all of them with that ultimate 
This card is sick. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this content, click that subscribe button so you get access to all our latest videos. This has been Metagame Mastery. Peace!